Well, first, you need a concentrated source of beta-cetosterol, and even the saw palmetto berry, the plant recognized as one of the best sources of beta-cetosterol, contains only 333 parts per million of beta-cetosterol. <laughs> to get one gram of beta-cetosterol from saw palmetto, you would need to have over six and a half pounds of saw palmetto berries. Furthermore, beta-cetosterol is very poorly absorbed orally. Less than 5% of what you take by mouth makes its way into the bloodstream, and then even less gets to the prostate itself. Thus, to absorb one gram of beta-cetosterol a day from saw palmetto berries, you would actually need to eat over 132 pounds of the berries a day. Elagic acid is found in raspberries and pomegranates. But again, we have the same problem with absorption and concentration. Unless you have the digestive capacity of a 500-pound mountain gorilla and you spent all day stuffing yourself with saw palmetto berries and raspberries, you would need to get a more concentrated source of beta-cetosterol and elagic acid. So, the first two ingredients we chose to put in endosterol were concentrated forms of beta-cetosterol and elagic acid. Okay, that takes care of the first two problems, hormonal inversions and cancer. Let's move on to problem number three. The third cause of prostate problems is zinc deficiency. A zinc deficiency not only causes the prostate to operate less effectively, it can also cause it to enlarge. Different organs in the body have different requirements for elements, and for the prostate, zinc is required. It may sound strange that some organs need more of one element than another, but you already know of the most common example. It's called goiter. While the younger generation may not be as familiar with this, the older generation will be. Goiter is an enlargement of the thyroid gland in the neck due to insufficient iodine in the diet. Iodine is a heavy element, and rain typically washes it out of mountainous soil into the rivers and eventually into the sea. People living near the oceans who eat fish get all the iodine they need, but people who live in the mountains often become iodine deficient and can develop goiter. Of course, this isn't seen much anymore in developed countries where iodine is added to table salt, but it demonstrates the point. Individual organs, or glands, have specific mineral requirements, and when they don't get what they need, they malfunction and can enlarge. Thus, prostate enlargement can be considered prostate goiter. Unfortunately, zinc is not added to table salt like iodine is. This, added to the fact that zinc becomes more difficult to absorb with age, leads to the widespread zinc deficiencies we see today. Keeping in mind that we not only need to supplement with zinc, but deliver it to the body in a highly absorbable form, the third ingredient in endosterol is pumpkin extract, which is high in bioavailable zinc. The fourth cause of prostate problems is cadmium toxicity. Cadmium toxicity is actually related to zinc deficiency in the sense that low zinc levels can cause cadmium toxicity. Cadmium is a toxic heavy metal, commonly found in soft drinks, seafood, cigarette smoke, plastics, water softeners, and other places. Cadmium can cause chronic fatigue, hair loss, high blood pressure, arthritis, impotence, and, of course, prostate problems. Cadmium owes its unique ability to damage the prostate to its similarity to the element zinc. Now, all beneficial elements have their toxic analogs, poisonous elements that the body mistakes for the beneficial ones. This is due to similarities in the atomic radius and electrical charge of certain elements. Thus, the body mistakes aluminum for magnesium lead for calcium, mercury for selenium, and cadmium for zinc. Now the prostate needs zinc to function, and it is often zinc deficient, 
So when it sees some toxic cadmium floating by in the bloodstream, it thinks, "Oh, good! Here's some zinc. I need that," and it gobbles it right up. In this manner, over time, cadmium accumulates and begins causing problems. If a man were to take supplemental zinc his whole life, it would offer some protection against cadmium absorption. But even so, some cadmium is bound to make it to the prostate. The only way to deal with cadmium is to remove it with a chelator. A chelator is an ingredient that has a very strong attraction to a particular element. If the attraction it has is stronger than the attraction the body has for that element, the chelator can pull that element out from the body. The safest and most effective cadmium chelator is called EDTA. EDTA is an amino acid that has a 50-year history of removing toxic metals like cadmium from the body. Once EDTA has attached itself to cadmium, the entire complex becomes water-soluble and will be eliminated harmlessly in the urine within a few hours. Thus, EDTA is the fourth ingredient in endosterol. The fifth cause of prostate problems. Is calcium deposits in the prostate? We've discussed cadmium, and we can agree that it is a toxic metal. But what about calcium? Isn't calcium vital for our health? Absolutely. Calcium keeps our bones and teeth healthy, and has many important roles to play in our biochemistry. What is not commonly known is that as we age, calcium migrates from the bones and teeth where it belongs. Into the soft tissues and organs of the body, when calcium does this, it turns from a beneficial mineral into a pathological one. When calcium moves into the kidneys, we get kidney stones. When it deposits in the gallbladder, we get gallstones. When calcium migrates into the arteries, we get arteriosclerosis and atherosclerosis. When calcium gets into the joints, we get arthritis. And when calcium gets into the prostate, we get prostatic calculi, also known as prostate stones. In addition to being a gland, the prostate is also a small pump, and like any pump, it needs to be free of debris to function properly. As we age, these tiny prostate stones accumulate, reducing the prostate's health and functionality. Now. There are two ways to remove prostate stones. The first is a medical procedure that involves a catheterization. Ouch. The second is with EDTA, which goes in and pulls the calcium out, just like it removes the cadmium. Thus, EDTA serves double duty, supporting both the removal of toxic cadmium and also calcium stones.